So, Josh, I go to you first before I bring it on the desk. Do you feel like sentiment has improved for stocks overall? No, I think a lot of the positive uh, breadth is happening back in the large caps and mega caps. And I think if we're talking about stocks overall, I would not say sentiment has improved. Uh, I think you now just have a new leadership group. It happens to be a very widely owned leadership group, which helps move the chains in terms of the index. Um, but this is really a Q's outperforming the S&P. Um, you look at the month of March, 8% versus 2%. That's pretty uh, notable. It is the third month of QQQ outperformance in a row. That is the first repeat monthly outperformance. You have to go back to June through August of 2021. So it's been a while since we've seen this particular group of stocks at the top of the charts. It's nice to see. Uh, I think, the again, these stocks are owned by everyone, so people are enjoying that. Um, but I would not take that and say, hey, everybody loves stocks again, um, because I can show you a lot of pockets in the market where you're seeing uh, uh, struggling uh, still for, for stocks just to, to tread water. So what prevents you from being more positive then, from feeling you're in your own mind that your own sentiment has improved or turned? Well, I think we've had some major uh, issues with some very large banks. The FDIC is probably the last competent government agency there is. It's non-political. The leadership is not on Twitter. Uh, it works as advertised. In 90 years, not a single uh, depositor has lost money when they were insured by the FDIC. Um, and so I think it's been really refreshing to watch them step in, sell one bank, wind down another, uh, and, and basically shore up uh, the, the situation. And the fact that that has happened, uh, combined with the fact that we've seen a retracement in, in uh, interest rates and treasuries, uh, I think has been really helpful. And that's, that pretty much explains why we're at 4,000. Tell me the story of why would, that would translate into 4,400 or 4,500 anytime soon. I, I really can't picture it. I don't think mm. we're going to start hearing great things about earnings when the season starts in 10 days or so. Um, and you've already gotten the benefit of, of easier interest rates and a falling dollar. What's the next benefit that we're getting here psychologically? I don't know where it's coming from. So that's what prevents me from being as constructive as I'd like to be. And I hope to be yeah. wrong. I hope to be able to change well, I mean, my mind. But that's where I am. Even today. our even our resident bull, um, Jim Labenthal, you've grown incrementally more negative of late rather than, you know, more getting more bulled up. Right. You should see the look Steph just gave me. But mm. yes, you're accurate. it is true, though. Right. You're accurate. You're accurate in what you say, because I mean, I, incrementally, it's like <laughs> I'm talking about like. Right. That's why hold I, I hold look. on. See, can I fit a paper through that? <laughs> Barely. You really should have seen the look that Steph just shot me. It was not a good look. But you're accurate in what you say. Look, I have to respect what's gone on with the banking system. I have to respect the tightening effect uh, of a credit crunch that is, is starting to unfold right now. And I also have to affect, uh, take account that this Fed and I'm going back to last week's move, I really don't think they get what's going on here, and I think they're going to make a bad situation worse. On the flip side, though, Scott, and this is why you're appropriate to just, you know, put your fingers really close together, there is strong economic activity. We know that. There is strong economic activity here in the U.S., and it's not just, you know, the supply chain on I got you. It's, I mean, bank fears of ease. They're, they're, you know, we are closer to the end, we think, with the Fed than we are the beginning. You know, you can, you can try and string together it. Well, incrementally I, so, more bullish case if you want to. So I catch your tone, I catch your word, and I agree with the tone and words. And that's where I'm saying I do think sentiment is positive, but boy, is it tenuous, okay? Because if I'm going to say something like right now, we talked about this two days ago, Josh was here, you know, uh, cars need to be manufactured right now. They need to be manufactured. We've got 12.2 <laughs> years is the average age of cars. They're falling apart, and you can see it on the road. Deer inventories are low. So that needs to happen. It's going to happen, and that's going to near and you're to the benefit not just of GM and Ford, but the suppliers were, whether it's NXP or Cleveland Cliffs, which almost half of their business is automotive steel. I told you I had dinner with Lorenzo Gonsalves last, uh, last night, a CEO. CEO the CEO of Cleveland Cliffs, there's also Boeing. And again, you know, the Boeing will produce planes and deliver them as fast as they can get engines. I'm sure we'll talk about GE later, which is a major point of that. But so, my general point here is economic activity is real and it's strong. Do you feel, Steph, that there's more reason to be positive than not? I mean, 
Kramer earlier today said there's not enough right now for the Bears to hang their hat on. Dr. Michael Burry, obviously of big short fame, tweets this morning, quote, I was wrong to say sell, you know, whenever that last call was within the last few weeks. Um, there it is right here. I was wrong to say sell. Are we wrong to think sell? No, I mean, like, look, I think there are a lot of moving parts, Scott, right? And we have been in this trading range for a lot of reasons because there's so many uncertainties. And so if the bank situation has calmed down, it has so far, right? But I, I'm not sure we're done with, with the banks, uh, especially some of the weaker regionals. Um, but I don't think it's systemic. And if we can get past that, and we believe the Fed is actually almost done, to your point earlier, which I do think that they are, and the bank system and the problems leads to tighter financial conditions, almost doing the job for the Fed. And then you have a little bit less inflation.